Psalm 46. Now, Psalm 46 is the beginning of another trilogy. Uh, Psalm 46, Psalm 47, Psalm 48. These three Psalms are the Psalms of celebration. Why? Because Israel was surrounded, besieged by enemies. And these are the Assyrians. And the Assyrians were known for their atrocities. They were very evil, I've mentioned quite a few times. Yeah, when they capture uh, when they capture the people, what they do is they they bring them back to Assyria. They will hook their jaws and drag them. They were known as the first people to skin others alive. Okay, they are really evil. So you don't want you don't want to get in their way. Yeah, and they and we look at today ISIS behaving people and so on. They were behaving people back in those days and putting them on sticks and so on. Uh, those were the Assyrians. And so Israel was threatened. If you read 2 Kings chapter 18 and 19, 2 Kings chapter 18 and 19, uh, Israel was threatened by this Sennacherib. If you remember, we covered this, I think, a couple of years ago. Surrounded by Sennacherib and his army. And they were surrounding Israel. And it wasn't, wasn't exactly a very uh, uh, easy time for the Israelites. They, they were, of course, fearful. Okay. And so as these people came down from the north, Assyria is in the north, right? North of Israel. As they came down and so on. Um, even... The, the king then of Israel was Hezekiah. And Hezekiah was known as the next best king after King David. And so he had to make preparation. He even did this. He, you know, the enemies when they come, this is just a refreshing of memory. When they come, they, they always try and block off the water source. So that when they surround a city or they surround a, a country or whatever, they cut the water supply. So that will be the first thing that they will do to the enemies. But Hezekiah did this. Because just outside the city, there was this Gaihon Spring. Gaihon Spring. And the water, Israel, there is no river in Israel. No natural river. So he, Israel got to, Jerusalem got to depend on this water supply from the Gaihon Spring. But this is outside the city of Jerusalem. <coughs> so when the enemies come, they will surely, you know, secure the spring. Then Israel got no water. So what he did was he dug a tunnel. Okay? And this tunnel was linked to inside of Jerusalem. There was this pool of Shiloh. Pool of Shiloh. And this pool of Shiloh, when you read the gospel, you remember. Jesus sent the blind man there. Yeah. And uh, after Jesus had put mud on his eyes and then he washed and then he can see. So, they had people, Hezekiah had people to dig the tunnel. And until today, it is still an uh, um, engineering feat because it is really amazing how they did it. If you, those of us who went the second trip with me, we went to the Hezekiah Tunnel, right? You walk, who, did it, who walked in the Hezekiah Tunnel? I mean, I'm the only one. Uh. You already know. Uh. Okay, those who went with me second trip, we went to the Hezekiah Tunnel. We walked in there. The tunnel was cut out from all these rocks and so on. And today, uh, they built MRT, got those machines. And those days, how did they do it? I don't know. I'm an engineering guy. And I don't know how they did it. What kind of tools they had. But anyway, they started in opposite directions. And then they dug. And you know, those days no GPS system was on. <laughs> but they met in the center. If you tell me there is no God, that something is wrong with you, not with that. <laughs> but by divine guidance, the two met. And so this tunnel was formed. And then they were able to draw the water from up there 
down to the pool of Shiloh, where the Israel, where Jerusalem could survive. And meanwhile, they cover up the lake. So even when the enemy surrounded them, they could survive because there was this water. So that's why today that tunnel is called Hezekiah's Tunnel. And if you go to Israel, you should walk that tunnel. It's very refreshing. You can wear a day, you know, don't wear skirt, you know. Uh, wear, wear jeans, roll up your jeans or whatever. Walk is quite refreshing. And you just get to feel how did they do it in those days. And it is all by the providence of God. Okay? And some people have been asking about Israel whether, whether I'm arranging any trip. Uh, I am not. But if there be any group of 25 who, who, who gather and, and, and so they want, yeah, I, I will bring. Okay? But I, I have no plans at the moment to start organizing. But if there are people who are interested enough to pull together, yeah, I can bring you up. Okay? So I'm painting to you this. And also in 2 Kings, since we are... I want to give you this background so you understand this Psalm 46 better. It's not just, oh, I just read the Psalm, oh, God, our refuge, and thank Him, and so on. But what is the background? If you look at 2 Kings, chapter 18 and 19. Okay, we're not going to read all. I'm just going to point to you the, the highlights, huh? So, chapter 18, you see in your book, um, even in verse 13, chapter 18, the Assyrian threat, which I just spoke to you about. Yeah, how the Assyrians threatened Israel. And then, in chapter 19, chapter 19, Hezekiah seeks God's help. He turned to God. And you should read his prayer. Wonderful. His prayer was from verse 15. Verse 15 of chapter 19 until verse, verse 19. Okay? Verse 15 to verse 19. You read his prayer. Wonderful prayer. So he prayed to God. Turned to God. And it is believed that very likely Psalm 46, 47, 48, the trilogy, these three Psalms were written by Hezekiah. Okay, so he prayed. But enemies were, the, the enemies were quite overpowering, they, they were quite powerful, they were mighty, outnumbered them and so on, surrounding them. But he prayed. And then I point you to verse 35 of chapter 19, 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35. Are you there? 2 Kings 19, verse 28. Earlier on in chapter 19, he prayed, verse 15 to 19, and then in verse 35. And it came to pass on a certain night that the angel of the Lord went out and killed in the camp of the Assyrians 185,000. And, and when people arose early in the morning, there were the corpses all dead. So Sennacherib, king of Assyria, departed and went away, returned home. Yeah, with the tail between his legs. And remained at Nineveh. Well, of course, people were so embarrassed by his uh, failure. They killed him. Okay, so we, we read. So he came, now it came to pass as he was worshipping in the temple of Miss Rosh, his God, that his sons, Adramalek and Sarizeb, Sarizeb, struck him down with a sword and they escaped into the land of Ararat, then Ashadol, his son, reigned in his place. But the story ended well. The story ended well. That Hezekiah prayed to the Lord, and the Lord came, <coughs> sent an angel, and destroyed 185,000. Just one angel. Okay. This is wonderful. So, with that understanding, now we look at Psalm 46. Then the meaning, the meaning will be really uh, real to you. So, I have divided this into four, into three parts. Uh, in fact, I preached this uh, in the year 2001. 31st December 2001. Watch next service. Who are you there? No. Who was there? Uh, last
last week got the wash line service. Okay. Do you, are you crying out for rain? Okay. So, He is still God, our protector. Verse 1 to 3. I will not fear. Then He is still God, our provider. Verse 4 to 7. I will not be moved. He is still God, the proven one. Verse 8 to 11, I will not be anxious. This is faith. This is faith. And I pray that we will respond likewise, behave likewise, even when we are down in a tight spot. Uh, uh, or as my title I gave when I preached in 2001, confidence in the midst of a crisis. There must be some crisis in 2001 uh, for me to preach that in, in, in that watch night service. I can't remember. But anyway, so, verse 1. Okay. Before that, the title is God, our unfailing refuge. And it is to the chief musician, the son of the sons of Korah again, a, son, a, a song for Elamoth. Elamoth was a uh, young girl. I'm not sure who exactly she was. Verse 1. God is our refuge and strength. A very present help in trouble. We have heard this verse many times, right? Let's break it down. God is our refuge. That is internal or external? External. External protection. He is our refuge. And strength. <coughs> strength is inside. Internal power. So you read all this, uh, you see, like you come to the hill of God, to the mountain of God, uh, to the holy hill with clean hands and pure heart. Clean hands is outside, pure heart inside. So God is interested in both, not just some people outside but inside dirty. But some people inside clean, but outside don't want to do anything. Okay? Uh, so, it means their actions are quite different from what they profess with their mouth. So, God is our protector on the outside and also our strength on the inside. A very present help in trouble. Means what? Means what? He is the present tense God. Not past tense, not future tense. He is the present tense. Now, on time. He's on time. He's never early. He's never late. He is on time. You are just impatient. I'm just impatient. You understand? Huh? We want and we want it now. But He is the present time, present tense God. He's the on time God. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed even though the earth be removed. Now, this is very extreme. For the earth to be removed, uh, you, you read only up, uh, all the way to Revelation. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. This one God. But for the psalmist to say, even though the earth be removed, we will not fear. He is painting the extreme. So for us, it's, even if there is earthquake, even there is tsunami, you know, terrorism, hurricanes like in Philippines, tornado, droughts, floods, fire, we will not fear. God is not going to pamper us, but God put us through the test that we might pass the test. You know, that He can prepare us for greater challenges. You follow me? So don't pamper your kids. Sometimes there are certain things they need to learn. Let them learn. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, wow, tell the, the mountain, uh, be thou God, <laughs> and mountain go, right? Yeah. And though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, again it is a, a very unlikely event. But this is extreme. Even if the mountain should go down into the sea, we will not fear. 
and the next one points to us uh, something we all know. Though its waters roar and we trouble, what is that? Lightning, like tsunami. The waters roar, its waters roar and we trouble. I mean, if just the, the Bukit Timah uh, canal overflow, nothing. Nah. You know? But when it comes uh, 30 stories high and it sweeps all the way inland into the city, throw the, the ship uh, out a few kilometers into inland a few kilometers, uh, that is soon. Though its waters roar and be troubled, <coughs> though the mountains shake with its swelling, you know what? We will not fear. Okay? So, why? Because He is still our God. He is still our protector. We will not fear. That is the key thing. The first part of this psalm. We will not fear. Even though, even though Zanet, Jereb and, and, and the Assyrian army, they are coming and, and the way they march, the huge army, the way they march with their horses and so on, it sounds like thunder. Oh, every every night you, you 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 hear all the rumbling and the and the, the whatever. Wow, the enemy is coming. We are dead, dead, really. But we will not fear. Okay. First of all, there is still a river whose stream shall make glad the city of God. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God. Um, I, as I said just now, Jerusalem got no natural river. Don't have. River Jordan is outside. Okay? Not inside Jerusalem. There is none. But now, with the Hezekiah Tunnel, there is a flow inside of Jerusalem, inside the city. You understand? If, they, if Hezekiah did not construct that tunnel, there will be nothing. Then once the enemy takes over the Gihon Spring, they will be thirsty. Okay, they will die of thirst. But now, there is a river. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, Jerusalem. So if you don't understand that background, then you try and see it, but in, in Jerusalem, no, there is no river. But now with this, you know, the Hezekiah Tunnel, there is a Okay? Now, what about us? What's the application to us? There is also a river inside here. There is a tunnel. There is a tunnel hidden from human eyes. And there is that river of life. And that is the Holy Spirit, the river of water. Okay? That is flowing inside us. The Holy Spirit. That makes clear make us clear okay so if you look at the river you can also find uh, in Revelation 22 verse 1 and 2 Revelation 22 pointing to the future you know we we have uh, some people have parts of stone you know very hard and so on so Allow God to dig, 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 break through, then the river flows. And that's where you shall be glad. Okay. Revelation 22, the last chapter of the Bible. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding from the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the middle of the street, and on either side of the river, was a tree of life, which bore twelve fruits, each tree yielding its fruit every month. The leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. So, it is going to be fruitful in the new heaven and the new earth. Yeah. There will be a river clear, crystal clear, then the, 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 the plants there will be fruitful. So back to Psalm 46.
the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. Of course, because the tabernacle is a holy place. And where is the tabernacle? In Jerusalem, in the city. So the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High, God is in her, in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. Because if the enemy comes in, the enemy might move, right? Relocate the people, destroy the temple, or whatever. But God is in the midst of her. The word Emmanuel comes to mind. Emmanuel is God with us. She shall not be moved. So they are saying, God shall help her just at the break of dawn. God shall help her just at the break of dawn. See? Did we not read just now 2 Kings chapter 19, verse 35? In the morning they woke up. Huh? Eh? All the enemies huh, were lying there as dead corpses. Because the angel came and killed 185,000. God shall help her at the break of dawn. Just in time. He is the present tense God. When you need him, he will be there. Okay? Verse 6. The nations rage, the kingdoms will move. And this, if you point to the future, this is the time of the tribulation. And during the time of tribulation, it will be a very terrible time. If you go and study Revelation and so on, the nations were raging and, and kingdoms moved and so on, fighting. And even now, war and terrorism. I mean, I, 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 I read, I was away for a few days and I read and I heard the news about what's happening in Paris. It's crazy, right? That is terrorism. And I'd like you to look at this. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. He uttered his voice, and the earth melted. And so this is talking about the future in the in the tribulation. Yeah. They were all it's going to be quite a mess and so on. He uttered his voice, the earth melted. And as I mentioned earlier, he spoke, God spoke, the word of God spoke. And the world was created. So he spoke again for the earth melted. Okay? So that is the only potence of our God. The enemy, how can he even challenge God? Verse 7 The Lord of hosts is with us. The Lord of the army, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. So, cling on to him. He is our refuge. But I, I want to point to you this. The God of Jacob. You know, uh, I, I mentioned this uh, previously also. Now, uh, you, you, when you, sometimes you read, oh, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel, the God of Jacob, the God of Israel. Jacob was a conniver, king snatcher. Jacob was not transformed yet. He was still a naughty boy, right? Israel, when God changed his name after he wrestled with God, changed his name to Israel. Israel means what? Governed by God. But now here we see the God of Jacob referring to the people of Israel at that point in time. They were still naughty. They still had fleshy tendencies. They were not righteous. You understand? They were still uh, not totally pleasing to God. But still, God is their God. They are His people. They are not perfect yet, but God by His grace and His mercy will still protect them and provide for them, which is our second segment here. He is still God, our provider. I will not how wonderful to have a merciful God, right? That while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. And we are not perfect yet. We are on the way to perfection. This is still under construction. Yeah? Work in progress, but He still 
extends his grace and mercy to us. That is him, the God of Jacob, is our refuge. Amen. Okay, now the third part. He is still God, the proven one. From verse 8 to 11. Come, behold, the works of the Lord. Means what? Come and see for yourself. Come, behold, the works of the Lord, who has made desolations in the earth. Desolation, these are the destructions. Okay, destroyed the enemies and so on. That was his power over the enemies. Who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. You know, they've been trying to have peace on this earth. Since World War II, they started the United Nations. And then, uh, 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 they, they try and uh, bring about peace. You know, since 1945 until today, there is still no peace. Everyone is still uh, somewhere, somewhere, somehow, in some place of this planet. There will be some conflict. There will be some war. But the day will come. He will make the wars to cease. Because when Christ returns, as we, as we, we, we study, as when Christ returns, He will return in judgment and all the wars shall cease. He will break all the bowls and, and all these things and cut the spear in two. He will burn the chariot in the fire. And you find this in Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 4. He shall judge between the nations and rebuke many people. They shall beat their swords into plowsheds. So, swords which they use for fighting and killing, they will make into plowsheds. Go back to farming, you know, do some.